Hey, it's Lucy. Somehow I've accidentally stumbled onto the most stress-free way I could imagine writing my thesis introduction. I honestly didn't mean to, it just sort of happened, and because it saved me so much time and grief, I thought I would share it with you in case it means good news for anyone else too. It all began three and a half years ago, back when I first started my PhD and had no idea what I was doing, so I did nothing but read. In my undergraduate, I made paper notes when I read journal articles, which turned out to be difficult and inefficient when it came to cross-referencing or finding anything during exam periods. So for my PhD, I wanted to go digital. I downloaded the app Evernote after hearing about it from several friends already doing their PhDs, and I loved it immediately for the simplicity of its individual notes, the notebooks for their collection, and other really handy functions like tagging, searching, and sharing. Worth mentioning at this point, this is not a paid promotion for Evernote. Evernote is free, it is Mac and Windows compatible, and it's pretty much been the glue of my PhD from day one. When I took notes from journals, I had a template I used, which I would then fill up as I read either by copying and pasting large waves of text that I felt were important, or for the most crucial papers, I would sometimes just summarize as I went along and add my own thoughts and links. I did this with pretty much every paper I ever read that held anything in it that I remotely thought might be important or interesting, which meant by the time it came to my fourth year and to wanting to synthesize all of this information into a coherent document to put at the start of my thesis, I had over a hundred papers summarized in Evernote. Where to even begin? is one way to think about that. Or, oh my goodness, look at all the information I need to possibly write my thesis all in one handy place. I reread all my notes going back to the very start of my project, meaning that I could get a broad grasp of what was going on in my subject area and then contextualize my own project within it. And from then I could make a plan. This was not a detailed plan. This was each heading and subheading I wanted to talk about. And seeing it laid out in a list, I could consider whether that list made sense logically. For instance, should I talk about the Martian atmosphere first or the mineralogy of carbonates? And if I write about the atmosphere first, do I talk about its former pressure first or former composition? By laying out the plan, I now had the bare lines of this thing. And from there, I could start coloring in just at any point in the whole document with really simple sentences that just got the gist across. And it wasn't too important to focus on quality at this point. Then, when I had really basic sentences down, like Mars was much warmer in its past, that's when I started referring to my Evernote. How warm? When? How do we know? What do competing lines of evidence say? If I didn't have the answer in my notes, then I knew exactly what to go and hunt for in a new paper search. But more often than not, I actually already had the answers in my Evernote. I started working through each paper note, striking through each bit of information as I used it, skipping up and down my introduction, filling in the blanks as I found them. When all the bullets in a note were struck through, I put a tick in its name, marking it as done. And slowly, over about two weeks, that is what I did with every single article's note. I didn't need all of them. Some that were really obviously not relevant to my project, I would just put the tick through them to get them out of the way. But by the time I'd given all of them the tick and scored through all of the information in them, I had a first and thorough, detailed, coherent draft of the introduction of my thesis. I kept rereading through it, you know, adding bits, deleting bits, restructuring bits. Because of its creation process in very discrete chunks, this part was vital to making the thing flow and make sense. But with a little polishing, and after only a little time, I was extremely happy with the result. All thesis introductions are going to be different, and that's because Obviously, all theses are different. But after dreading this thing for months, I was really taken aback by how streamlined the whole process could be with just a few key things set up in place. Number one, persistent and consistent note-taking throughout the course of the PhD, so that the burden of reading wasn't placed and scrunched into those last few months. Number two, a bare-bones plan that more or less mirrored the structure of the end product. And number three, a searchable, formatable, and easily organizable note-taking app. And now my introduction is complete, pending supervisory approval, and oh my goodness, but that is one less thing to worry about at this stage of the PhD. If you're writing up your thesis, best of luck, isn't it a monster of a task? If you're not writing up your thesis, best of luck with your PhD, isn't it a monster of a task? It's tough, isn't it? And as I upload the 50th video on my channel since beginning this in 2017, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you everyone for watching these. I see in the comments that people find these helpful and thank you so much for telling me and I'm so so glad. That is why I make them. But at the same time, these videos really help me too. They 
helped me organize my thoughts and put things into words I was struggling with. They helped with my confidence because I used to be a really shy person and now I'm not. And they also, they helped me to be more positive because if I'm having a bad time and I'm hitting a brick wall and I feel nothing positive to say, I can't really say that on here. I've sort of got to think of a halfway hopeful spin on it. And most of the time I do. Thank you for watching this 50th video and here's to the next. My name is Lucy Kizik. I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Oxford and take care.